So your gym's been closed, you're missing your workouts, your waistline's expanding, you're going to buy some fitness equipment, but where do you start? What do I do, Scott? Do I choose a treadmill or an indoor bike? What's going to give me the best return for my investment? And ultimately, what's going to give me the best workout? So let's start with the clear and obvious thing that you want from the workout, and that is calorie burn. You want to make sure that your investment of time and sweat is going to make a difference to your fitness and your weight management program. So running requires more muscles, therefore more oxygen, therefore more calories. So it's a dead easy one, Scott. Why do we need to go through all this video? No, it's not that simple. Yes, the same athlete at the same intensity for the same duration can actually burn up to 25% more calories when running compared to cycling. However, at steady state, and we don't want steady state. The reason we don't want that is we want to push your fitness and we want to vary the workouts. The variability of a workout is going to make sure that you turn up every single day, not just over the first few weeks, but six months from now, a year from now, you're going to get more fun, more motivation from the workout if you can vary it. But you can vary a run workout, Scott. Ah, but here are the limitations. When we increase the speed of the treadmill, we increase the speed of the belt. Therefore, your cadence, therefore your run speed has to increase with it to a point that pushes your heart rate to the level that you want. To decrease, there is a lag in the time that it takes for the belt to decrease in speed. But your legs have to keep going. So you either control that movement or try and jump off or just fall over and hit the wall. Now, I'm being a little bit flippant, I know. Now, on the bike, we have got three points of contact whereby we're supporting through the pedals, the saddle, and the handlebars. This allows you to increase the intensity on the bike to a point where we can hit a peak power, a peak heart rate, and then stop. We can freewheel, we can take a rest. That variability is super important because you've got to make sure that you're turning up regularly for a workout. And nobody's going to turn up every session just to do steady state exercise. No, you're going to want to spike the heart rate, increase the speed, increase the intensity, and make the workout give you that sweat, that burn. And that is going to manipulate the calorie burn so we can actually get a better workout on the bike, even over 20 minutes. And we can manipulate those calories. So the next thing I want to talk about is the immediate risk of injury and the long-term risk of injury. Chances are, if you're new to running and you're using it to lose weight, that your body weight is going to be greater than your specific joint strength. Now, what the hell does that mean, Scott? What are you talking about? Well, most people who start running pay little attention to the strength of the muscles that are going to propel their body forward. As we go from walking to jogging to running to sprinting, the loads through the joints increase. And most people haven't spent much time increasing the strength of their muscles through the joints. So when we go out running, we will feel the fatigue normally in our legs way before anything else. And the brain tells us, this is too hard, I'm going to stop. And the chances of maintaining a long-term fitness journey are massively reduced if you stop exercising after that first few attempts. On the bike, we are supported through the saddle and the pedals and the bars. So the loading through the joints is less. Therefore, joint strength is not that important when we're on a static bike. Yes, if we're going out onto the road, we need to move body weight plus bike up hills, but we're not doing that on a static bike. So therefore, the load through the joint is less. Therefore, the risk of any soft tissue damage or any wear and tear damage is massively reduced. It's that joint specific strength that's really, really important in those first few days, those first few weeks of any exercise plan. So the bike wins. The next thing I want to talk about is its floor space. Where is this piece of equipment going to go? Have you sorted out space that it can take all the time? Now, what I mean by that is even if you've got a treadmill that will fold up and down, I would rather that you get something that stays in position. It doesn't have to move because again, we go back to this ability to turn up and deliver the workout. As soon as you have to move it or you fold it up, 
it becomes a little bit of an ordeal, a little bit of a, oh, do I really have to move that thing? And exercise becomes more like a chore rather than an enjoyment. So get it its own space. And if you haven't got the space all the time for the treadmill and it needs to be brought out and unfolded, please think again. The bike will take up usually half the floor space of a treadmill and if it's got its own unique space, much more likely to turn up and deliver. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the durability. Now this is going to be linked of course to your budget, but I have seen and used products for around £700 to £1000 and which are wonderful. Anything under that, then you are getting into that gamble whereby you've got to do your research, you've got to make sure you read the reviews, check the warranty on the product. But with the treadmill, you've got to make sure that it's got an incline and decline setting. This will allow you more variability in the workouts and the incline will allow you to biomechanically set your body up into a less aggressive position. However, it's that very function that breaks down more times than not. So you've got to make sure you've got a product that's well tested, it's got great reviews on that incline decline. Now on the bike, it's got less moving parts. Less moving parts means less things to break down. In fact, most indoor bikes will run on a belt. They don't run on chains. This belt can last for years before it needs to be replaced. And again, if you look after it, you clean it after the workout, the bike is going to way outlive the treadmill because of the less moving parts. Now I'm not saying that you have to start it's £700 or $1,000. There are good products for around about £500, $750. But if you go under that, you are taking a risk. Now you can push the budget up, you'll get a more durable product, but you'll also get more interaction with online platforms. And if that's your thing, then look at that as well. But if you buy at the bottom end, make sure that you can bolt on interaction because the more efficient you become and the fitter you become, You'll want to engage in other activities that make it more motivational for you to get on, challenge yourself, test yourself against previous scores and even against others. So let's summarise everything that I've gone through. One, calorie burn. I'm giving it to the bike. Even though steady state exercise will always have running slightly higher, we need that variability. So when it comes to workout choice, the bike wins all the time because it takes a high level of skill to be able to vary the workout on a treadmill compared to a bike. So if it's for calorie burn and a real short, sharp fitness experience, the bike gets it. So make sure you do your research. There are lots of great review sites now where you can get some good feedback. You can even send me a message if you're unsure really. I do not have an affiliation with any products. Yes, I've got walk bikes. Yes, I've got Reebok uh, treadmills. Not gonna promote one product ahead of another. One of my walk bikes has been with me for six years. Never had a day's trouble with it, but it's at the upper end of the budget scale. Now, remember, at the end of the day, the biggest concluding point I can make to you is the piece of kit that you get has to deliver what you want. It doesn't matter how great it looks. It doesn't matter how interactive it is. You've got to get on it and got to work and you've got to sweat and you've got to go back tomorrow and the day after, the month after, the year after. That's what counts. Hey, remember, anyone can train smart, but there's only a few of us can train hard. I'll see you in the next video and be sure to reach out if you've got any questions.